I know it's sort of at press junkets, we all sort of journalists will ask people about working with a director and everyone sort of speaks about what a great experience it is, because that's what you do. But in this, but Ryan Coogler is a genius, isn't he? <laughs> he actually genuinely is. Completely. How, like, I just wanted to talk about the collaboration process with him, because I've, I've interviewed him a few times and he's just, he just knows exactly what he wants to do and he's a, a magician behind the lens. I just wondered about that kind of process working with him for the, for the second time. You know, Ryan knows what he wants, but he really invites you to be a part of getting it there. Mm -hmm. So he has a very strong vision, but he's not um, exclusive about it. He, uh, he invites us into the process. We get to advocate for our characters because he trusts us to know our characters best. Um, so in the process, we'll be able to, we, ha we were able to offer up uh, uh, suggestions and it's it's a very collaborative process and he doesn't stop working mm -hmm. so he is refining and adjusting things until the very end I mean he was still refining things last mm -hmm. week you know so that is I think what makes him special and he's a man who really relies on on the collective mm -hmm. you know um, he is loath to take credit for it and but I would just say that he is a, a good leader because mm -hmm. he brings out the best in everyone he works with and he also picks um, people that he can trust and, and, and have confidence in. And I think that's a power that is mm -hmm. little spoken about, the power of like m uh, putting together the right team. Mm -hmm. And he has that. Yeah, it's a safe space. It mm -hmm. creates a really safe space for you to kind of do your best work. And like Lupita said, uh, he invites you into the collaborative process. So, you know, even with, say, the Jabari, like even from the first movie, he said, I, wanna, I want something that feels calm and response. What are you thinking? And, you know, I went away, um, collaborated with some other uh, folks on set and came up with that chant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he then does his thing. He comes in, he's like, I love that this I don't know if that works there but I love this mm -hmm. and he'll do that every way around because you know a big part of this movie is the world building mm -hmm. so creating the language and I mean like the body language mm -hmm. the like cultural language like all these very specific things um, really comes from us contributing a lot to it like none of that is something that's on the page necessarily, you know yeah. necessarily and um that's something that, you know, Ryan, like Lupita says, really excels at the collective conscious trusting trusting that. Mm -hmm. So it, it feels like an incredibly safe space to work. Yeah. So you end up just risking doing your best, doing your most interesting work. Because one, you have the best playmates, and then you have a person who's just saying, sometimes I'm going to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then when he comes and he gives you any notes it's something that you definitely didn't see mm -hmm. or plan for and it just makes everything just go crazy mm -hmm. it goes it, it comes alive differently mm -hmm. i mean i can't obviously the film as i mentioned at the start is a very it's quite it's taken on quite a profound quite an emotional watch as a viewer which means we can't can't tell you how much we need in baku in this movie because he does provide those moments of just that, I mean, they're just those little peppering the film with little moments of mm -hmm. like relief. Did you even get that from reading the script going off, you know, this, did you even get that sense of relief during the process of reading it as, 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 as actors? I don't think, well, I can only speak for myself on what I read. Um, I didn't, I did not understand until watching it, mm -hmm. the entire tailoring of mm. the grief process. Mm. So that was not as apparent on the page. Mm -hmm. um, it was always about grief mm. on the page. It was always about loss and that entire, that hole left by T'Challa um, that really reflected our own loss. Mm -hmm. But what came out of the finished product felt like something different. I always knew that part of M'Baku's role is always just to to be the the, tr the truth sayer and the str the stress test in every moment. Like he'll stress mm -hmm. every moment to make sure that you know the foundation is good. That's <laughs> one of his biggest you know uh, roles in the franchise. It's if there's weakness, he's gonna point it out, and he's gonna try it. You know what I mean? Um, he himself is very 
reverent and irreverent. He's, he has a lot of duality um, and is based on duality. Um, so I knew he was funny, um, but the juxtaposition of what, what, what happens in the movie and the finished product really shows that totally different than how it reads on, on, on the page. Yeah, I mean, grief is such a vulnerable emotion. You guys do an incredible job yeah. in depicting it in this And it's hard to keep, keep it keep light. It yeah. 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 William, well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank That's you. That's the film. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!